fat and sober podcast i am joined by my brother from another mother my bandmate my homie my fucking one of my best friends in the whole wide world tanner Strawberry. what's up doggy so tonight is the night before the election aka the night before the world ends and uh <laughs> um how you feel about it um i mean like what do you think is gonna happen i don't know this one's like this is a pretty hard toss up right now. It kind of looks like it probably looks like it's going to be Biden, but I would not be surprised if it gets contested and or maybe you know maybe maybe the numbers come in later and Trump wins. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I honestly thought like, you know, in the like last few weeks I was like Trump's probably going to win. But I mean, I, I know for sure it at least it's going to be contested. Yeah, he's going he's going to make a big deal about it. Oh, for sure. And we were talking about it in the class I had today, and he was like, he he said that uh, the professor said that he thinks that neither one of them are going to concede, like they're going to accept that they lost, like they're going to contest it, they're going to challenge it, right. and then what it's that come down to the courts. Yeah, it's going to come down to the courts, and then I mean, and it's been stacked. Now it's six three. You know, six conservatives, three right. liberal. Yeah. So it, it, that may be a thing. Right. Were you worried, like, with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg dying? Like, I mean... It, it, the whole situation kind of pisses me off more than anything because when she had the opportunity to step down voluntarily and retire when Obama was president, yeah. she could have replaced somebody and helped vote for somebody that would have been at least more center, you know, or at least more compromising. Right. But she stayed in and then died underneath a Republican president. So, yeah. Like, I didn't even think it, about that. It, it makes sense that they would do that. I, yeah. I kind of, as soon as she died, I was like, oh, well, they're going to put a super conservative woman there. Yeah. I watched a little bit of the hearing of them science swearing her in and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, just like very, very little of it. And, uh, it's boring. It's yeah, it's, politics it, is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, I I don't pay attention enough as I probably should, and that's like why I love having you as a friend because I I will ask you these things and you have a good opinion or like you just inform me. But I mean, do you know any what, like what is some of the things she stands for? Is she like I know I think the the conversation right now is yeah. that she's totally against abortion, right? Something like that. I haven't really looked into it, but like, um, I'm pretty sure she's like trying to eventually overturn Roe v. Wade. But what I did watch from that hearing is that she would, like, not really give good answers. She would just, like, resort to case law and be like, it would have to be, you know, up at the time or take it case by case and couldn't set, like, a precedent. I didn't watch all of it, though, you know, but... Yeah. It, of course they would do that, though, you right. know? It, so, I mean, Roe v. Wade, it's, like... That's what we go off of, but it's not actually in, on the books, like right as far as abortion being legal or illegal, right? I don't know. I don't. I think that it's just like a a Supreme Court ruling which would make it legal or or right. illegal, right. legal or illegal, and it's probably up to states. The yeah. states probably decide to what degree. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't think it was like a, an amendment or anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Some of that stuff gets so lost on me. Like I. I <laughs> I was like writing a paper and I did an interview with this lady and she she went before the Senate and I had to like literally Google like what what the Senate was part of. I forgot. <laughs> it's part of Congress. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's confusing. I mean, yeah. like I'm as like you were saying, you don't watch as much as you should. I am kind of a junkie and I watch it to where it's like it just fucking pisses me off or it yeah. stresses me out. And um, I, I don't know. I was going somewhere with that. The you I said that I didn't know what the Senate was or what it was. Oh part yeah, of. even even me that like I I try to pay a lot of attention. I, some of that stuff is just confusing. Yeah. So I mean, going back to like you know over the last four years of of having Trump in office, like what are the things to you that stick out in your mind like that are have been the most detrimental? The things that he's done that are like you know so grievous, grievous. How do you say that word? I don't know, man. That's a fat list. I mean, it's hard to remember, like, in the beginning because, you know, some of the major scandals that happened back then are just as important as the ones that are happening now. 
but I just can't remember. They're, well, I got a list here. Let's get a list. The first one says, uh, well, in 2017, the, the first one of this list was he signed the executive order on the Muslim ban. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty xenophobic. Yeah, that's pretty you fucked up. Mean? Yeah. And it's, it's crazy to me, too. I remember when that happened, I was thinking... I don't even remember what it was a reaction to. I don't. There wasn't like a terrorist attack or anything, right? I think it was just. So there was some, I think there was something that something. made him do that. But it's crazy to me that we didn't even do that after 9/11. You know what I mean? And there was plenty of terrible things that happened to Muslims right after 9/11. Right. But like, it wasn't like a state issued, you know, like from the White House saying that they can't come here. Or yeah. To yeah. like, d- yeah, you know, straight up discriminate against them. All right. And I mean, it's so weird to think that that even happened. Like in this day and age, you know, like that yeah. we banned a whole group of people, and you know, it's more than just race just like too. Blanketed, blanket generalized all these people. Yeah, you know, and there's all colors of Muslims. Right. You know, and like, I I think Islam is just as asinine as the other organized religions, but not, like more or less, it's they're essentially the same. So if you're gonna allow one kind, you have to allow the other, or or nothing, you know. But even like on the uh, on the Statue of Liberty, there's a poem at the base written by Emma Lazarus. Right. And it was uh, it says I forget the exact quote. You know what I mean? But it talks about how you need to be welcoming and like open. You know. Isn't it? Give me your poor, your, your tired, tired, huddled your... masses, yeah. yearning to breathe free or something. Right. We, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it it's contradictory to the fundamentals of what America is supposed to be. I, Not yeah. that it's been that way anyway, but, you know, ideologically, it's sound. Right. I don't know if I necessarily agree with some people that say, like, we're the greatest country on earth. Like, I don't agree, like, as far as policies go or it's economics. It's so subjective. It's super subjective, and it's a really broad thing. But I do think that one of the best things about this country is the fact that, you know, we get so many people from all around the world who come over here with fucking nothing and they bust their ass and they make a life for themselves and their children and their grandchildren. And like that is the spirit of what it makes America yeah. a great place. The opportunity to do well. Right. And the yeah. acceptance. Like there are so many different kinds of people over here. And like I think that's really what, if anything, that's probably what our forefathers w- were aiming for, you know? Yeah. But. To some degree, because a lot of times I, I r- resort to. Um, a lot of what they did and said, the forefathers, but then at the same time, they they owned slaves, and a lot of them, like, raped their slaves, yeah. and, like, I mean, I know you can't fault them on, you know, you can't base your opinion on their life's work for these, but, like, those are, you can't, you can't just sweep those underneath the rug, you know, right. those are things that need to be criticized and brought up when considering their work, you yeah. know what I mean? I agree. I mean, I feel like there's probably things, where, I mean, especially now with Trump, but I'm just saying in general, I think that there are things that we accept as a society now or we're doing now that we'll probably look back on 100 years from now and be like, that was fucked up. I mean, I think that's normal. Yeah. I think that's pretty fucking normal. Probably cancel culture. Honestly. That's Honestly. Probably, that's one thing that now I'm like, dude, you have the right to say stupid shit and you, you know, it, people say that you don't have the right to not be affected by the consequences of what you said. But to, like, demolish people and, like, just, you know, what is it, um, character assassination mm-hmm. of people based off of stupid shit they've said in the past. Right. I mean, I get it. You, the, a lot of these companies are private companies and they can do that. But right. the online backlash people get for saying things, I'm like, man. I'm oh, like, and the, like, deplatforming, that's so scary to me. Like, yeah. and I, I get it. It's a private company. But, like, the thing that I think about is, like, if you silence one one perspective you're, you're only going to make it grow that too yeah. but you're only going to make it grow more underground you know what i'm yeah. saying like because you prove the point like yes they're trying to shut us down like that's evil we're, we're good right. and so like it doesn't actually progress anywhere because you just you know what i mean you shut down the argument you right. close off the actual conversation and it doesn't have a chance to really grow into something like uh you know like rogan had that daryl davis dude on um, I don't know, like a year ago, and the dude, you know, mm. has converted people out of yeah. the KKK just like, by being their friend. Yeah, and he has like a, a KKK card. He's a member. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember seeing that dude. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. I mean, like, we're one of the only places with free speech, and it's like being whittled away because, uh, 
because the people who are in charge of media are mostly liberal, and I'm liberal. I, I, I you know what I mean. Like I've voted Democrat, Green Party, and stuff. Like I, I am a liberal person. Like I have liberal values. Well, and, you have empathy for humans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's right. Like I don't. I still have conservative people that I will listen to and talk to and love. Like, you friend. have to have that input. Yeah. I mean. And like I don't think the forefathers realized that like these social media companies are now like the public square. They're yeah. the social gathering for thoughts and opinions of all 330 million or so yeah. people. So I mean, to one extent, you can't really have like, you can't have fascists on there. Yeah. Just recruiting people and radicalizing in the same way that you can't have like ISIS videos that recruit and you know manipulate young people to join those got to be banned you know you, you've got to ban those but like people like Alex Jones the dude's wild and I, do, I mean I think he's a grifter I think it's an act but you can't you can't throw him off of the internet you can't yeah. silence him like that because then who's next right it would be the far left dudes and then it'll yeah. just get closer and closer to where they're curating what our national discourse is. Right. Did you watch the new episode of, with Alex Jones on Rogan? No, but yeah. I saw that. Yeah. There. It's, it's pretty great. And, like, one thing that I do, like, appreciate about what he when he has people like that on is, like, they fact-checked him the whole time. Yeah. A lot of the a things he said... That, yeah. And the, all, a lot of the things he said were... <laughs> were provable like he quoted like bill gates saying or bill gates being interviewed about this the early covid vaccine and that uh, 80 80 percent of the people that were given the vaccine uh got sick and then 20 percent were in the hospitals and then um they they pulled that up and showed it and then i think rogan reposted on instagram and it's just like holy fuck you know what i'm saying i don't know if bill gates is you know the evil villain like some people are trying to make him out yeah. to be but it's like that's pretty he's fucking not like our savior though no for sure i mean he's a multi multi billionaire he's yeah. not our friend our re the regular guy you know right. what i mean i mean he i know that they him like the bill and melinda gates foundation have donated a lot and they've provided infrastructure and stuff in a lot of underdeveloped places but there's a catch always right. somehow you know i right. i just am very skeptical of billionaires acting like cha 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 philanthropy you know I'm right like, well philanthropy is the way that they use their power and their influence right. because they do philanthropy in one area to get what they want in another area or that same area right. you know like donate that makes sense. yeah i mean it, it, that's that's what they do like donating to a school and so that school will buy you know a thousand microsoft servers or whatever you know that's or something. yeah i mean that's and that's the way everything works in this that's, capitalist that's society that's I mean, how it is man that's the way our fucking politics work and yeah. like i don't know have you seen the social dilemma yet i've seen the first like 30 minutes i haven't i haven't finished it yeah it's it's great but um, i saw how they were talking about like the original ceos and the creators and stuff were just like when they asked how do we fix the problem or what is the problem and all of them were like and like they they all had to like think for a minute before yeah. they responded. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, but it basically just discusses and and t talks about how the polarization and all all these things that are going on through social media are the fault of the algorithm because basically it rewards or like you know the the goal of the algorithm is to keep you engaged for longer. So the things that get more engagement, like violence and drama and shit like that, get plugged. Yeah. The more you the more you engage with the more the more bad shit you see the more you engage with it and it'll give you more of that same right. stuff and so like one thing that I've thought about that since then is like that's really like is all I mean you know this we're already kind of going deep but like is all of that the fault of capitalism because the reason it is that way is to make money is to make money yes and so I mean we're being outraged by these algorithms yeah. so they can make money off our advertising or off our data right and you know what so I mean? suppose we make it like a public utility like you do electricity or you know public works stuff like that so as to bring that control down or I don't know maybe you, sp you maybe you split the companies up you know you, you yeah you have to break, bust them up? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, and it, I don't know if you got to the part in that documentary where it talks about, like, Myanmar. Like, I don't know if you know what happened there through social media, but mm. basically Facebook, and I, I'm, I'm going to fuck it up, but Facebook basically um, came into Myanmar and they they established, like, Wi-Fi through 
to use Facebook, and so everyone in Myanmar uses face. Yeah, they use Facebook just as the internet. They don't. They don't even use anything else. They just they use it for to message each other, to to FaceTime, everything. Business connections. Yeah, everything. all of it. It's basically their their you know centralized internet, which is most of the internet now is only between a few different websites and, and companies. But um, what what had happened was is there was like Facebook groups where and even the government even used Facebook to spread false uh, narratives about Muslim people and then there was like a genocide that basically happened over the course of a couple of years. I do not doubt that. Yeah, and so I mean, literally, like this shit, this this outrageous polarization of algorithms has literally like cost lives and, and had people killed. I mean, even it's happened here in the states too, like Pizzagate and you know, uh, true that but, and some of the Q shit. Right. Like, uh, even in, like, Loveland, Texas, I was driving the other day and saw a big Q sticker on the back of a Tahoe. Really? A nice Tahoe, and I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. I know somebody that um, owns a business here that is, like, a QAnon believer, and it's, like, fucking crazy to me, you know, like, and I don't really know what they believe. Like, I know that they, like, I have one friend that's into it. He's, like, you know, Andrina Chrome. Yeah, they're... You know, taking the life out of babies essentially so they can live longer and yeah. cannibalize people and yeah. rape babies and stuff. Yeah, and Hollywood is all in on it, which I'm not saying that's not true. We saw some of that shit with yeah. Epstein. Like, it's... I'm sure, I mean, that, that makes more sense than like a global organized cabal. I mean, maybe there's evidence, but like, it makes more sense to me that there would be very wealthy and powerful people in powerful positions that take advantage and you know, exploit people for sexual gratification. That's been going on forever and ever, you know? Right. Yeah. It, it, it makes sense to me too. Like, I mean, if you, what do you get the person that has everything? Like they, if they, if they keep seeking wealth and it's yeah. not about the money anymore, it's, it's about the power, power yeah. then, then they're going to, they're going to play that out and they're like sexual they're fantasies. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to move on like, like an addict would or yeah. something. Yeah. They're I just, mean, they're addicted to power. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I mean, in that Epstein documentary, it really, it really fucking moved me, man. Couldn't, like, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I didn't watch it. I mean, it's... It doesn't go into that great of detail, and I think that they had to do it. Like, I mean, it does for Epstein and Ghislaine, Ghislaine however the fuck you say yeah, her name. But the, the greater. Yeah, and Prince Andrews, that's the only one. But they didn't really out that anybody. Was a creepy motherfucker. Yeah. They didn't really out anybody else, but I think they ha- I think they really couldn't because I feel like if they were to out Bill Clinton or out somebody else, happen. like, yeah, it wouldn't have happened, you know? Yeah. So they would have disappeared or something. Yeah, <laughs> fucking slipped and fell down yeah. her stairs. Shot themselves in the back of the head twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't doubt that. Yeah, it happens, dude. And that's like you know, I think I think the craziest thing about when you talk when you start talking about conspiracy type stuff is the like if you really think about it, the best thing that could happen for the people who do those type of things is for everyone to believe that people who you know believe the in conspiracy conspiracies are crazy. are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's one. Okay, so wouldn't it make sense that the perpetrators of such things would intentionally agitate and put out the narrative of other crazy conspiracies Mm -hmm. in order to minimize the legitimacy of the real conspiracy? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I mean like shadow play to like get the yeah back like like, exactly. And and, I mean, I've I've often wondered too, like do like you know we a lot of people say George Soros and like um, he's paying all the Antifas yeah well yeah and like the Rothschilds and all yeah. those like but I bet that there's the probably the richest people on this earth nobody fucking knows who they are of course you know they probably just sit in the dark and silence and, and move pull strings and move chess pieces if it's really like that yeah. I mean I think it's more likely several different sets of oligarchies around the world where it's like the American oligarchy where there's like 40, 50 people or so, and right. then like an ultimately smaller tier. Right. And it's like that in China and Russia and, you know, in each of these areas that are plagued with oligarchies. Right. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. And like, this is this is where I kind of get some people who support Trump. They They believe in that. And they view him as somebody on the outside because, A, he's, like, quote-unquote self-made, which is bullshit, yeah. you know. But he's not, like, you know, levels yeah. of family yeah. wealth, his old money, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, there's no, you know, empty platitudes like, you know, you would hear from Pete Buttigieg where there's just words on words and words and then nothing gets said. And it's like the standard 
politician routine. Right. He def Trump definitely did pull the mask off. You know right. what I mean? He speaks bluntly, and that's actually I think more of a good thing. Yeah, yeah. We we were talking the other night, and you and you and Harvey said that, and I I didn't really think about it like that. You know, I've always thought of him like a fucking troll. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he just says the most outrageous thing to like get the most you know engagement. I don't think or, there's that much thought into it. I, yeah. I think he just fires off yeah. at what goes in his head, and then he gets yeah. backlash later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. So I mean, in your mind. Hold up. Sorry, something went wrong. That's weird. Uh, in your mind, I'll fix that in post, but... <laughs> okay. In your mind, what are the worst... So what are some of the worst things that Trump's done like that like have really bothered you, have really like upset you? Um, I mean, fuck. Like, I guess to start with some of the more recent things because they're more fresh on my memory... But, like, I saw something about how the ICE detention facilities were having reports of people that were having forced hysterectomies. I've heard that. Stuff yeah. like that. And a step behind that is just having them in the first place. Yeah. And the other day in one of the b debates, he mentioned to Biden about, you know, he, he, he had a killer-ass line where it was like, who built them? Who yeah. built them? And the Obama administration did build them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's like a... I think we'll look back on that like we do the Japanese internment camps. Right. But I don't know enough about the Japanese internment camps to know whether or not the, what we were taught in, in public school, like, yes, they were camps. Yes, they had to go there, but it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like the camps. Ice camps, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like um, the camps in Europe that, you know, the Poles and Jews and everybody were getting put into. Right. It was a little better. Right. I don't know if that narrative is true. But I think we'll look back at it in that same manner. Yeah. No, I agree. And I don't know if you watched the documentary Immigrant Nation on Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about that. And, like, you know, I've gotten in arguments with people over that. And they're like, that's the first thing they always say. Well, well Obama built him. He started it. And, like, yes, he yeah, did. Yeah, fuck Obama, too. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Like, you know, I think he was a better representative as far as, like, you know, he was a great speaker. Yeah, you he, know? Was, he was smooth. And he did the – he had the veneer of proficiency. He was, yeah. you know – destined to be a politician and i do remember feeling excited i know i was 18 when he got elected and i don't think i actually was able to vote because yeah i was 17 when the election happened mm -hmm. but um i remember feeling excited like wow it's it's we're, we're gonna have our first black president you know like it's um maybe things are changing you know and i was young i really didn't know much like i remember you know like i was in fourth grade when 9 11 happened and i i like almost everyone and even a lot of people now still like just thought the narrative, what they gave us was true. You know what I'm saying? Of course. And if anybody that listens to this doesn't, you know, believe that 9-11 was, there was some weirdness to it, I just, you know, maybe not YouTube because YouTube's kind of sketch, but read some <laughs> books. Just yeah. try to, you know, there are some weird things about what happened then. I mean, like Building 7, uh, the, I, Pen the yeah, Pentagon. Like, I, I, don't, uh, I don't, that's the, that's one of the conspiracies that I definitely am like, Okay, I've got a lot more questions after the report. You know, after yeah. the official government report came out, I'm like, you know, as an adult, it t it took reanalyzing it later. You know yeah. what I mean? Because at the time, of course, you know, I was young. I just, you know, the terrorists came and bombed us. Yeah, you know? same. I, I I believed it, you know. And then I, I got older and I kind of I read I remember I read a book about it, and I read another book. I think I read like three books in total about 9/11 mm -hmm. and you know my in my opinion uh, of all the evidence that that was you know presented, presented to me was that at the very least the government allowed it to happen so we could go into the middle east you know yeah. and, and uh, what's, what's weird is that most of the hijackers came from saudi arabia right but we went to iraq right and the un or i guess it's yeah it would be the un uh, straight up was like hey you can't do that that's illegal that's an illegal offensive war on a foreign nation that didn't do anything to you right we went there anyway. We right. said, what are you going to do? Yeah. We, the, we had Colin Powell up at the UN holding up like a vial of uranium or something right. saying they've got weapons of mass destruction. Yep. And they I, never found them either. I mean, it, it, none, none of it makes sense now. Yeah. You know? And we're still there in a sense. I mean, not not as much as we were. Not but the same capacity, yeah. But still, we're I mean. We're still in Afghanistan. That's yeah. like a 19 year old, 19 years, 2001. Yeah, 2001, so mm -hmm. yeah. I mean. I, and I remember watching the news 
when we bombed, I think it was Afghanistan, we went first, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I remember I remember watching the news with my family. And they had like a, you know, night vision video of them bombing. Bombing the shit out. Yeah. All, all the rockets flying through the air. Yep. That's like iconic now. Yeah, I remember that. And um, I don't remember where I was going with that, but... Essentially, it, it would make sense that they would go there for other strategic, like, reasons. Okay, so, like, there's all of the mineral wealth mm-hmm. that's in Afghanistan and all of the oil wealth that was in Iraq. Mm-hmm. And because those areas were very unstable, I think maybe they considered the possibility of another superpower coming in and, like, occupying the area mm-hmm. and, you know, exploiting the mineral resource and the oil resources so that they went there instead and then ended up creating a power vacuum. Right. And then split it up, and then we have all these different sects of... Al-Qaeda, and then now ISIS. Yeah, and then, I mean, and there's there's a bunch of them. And a lot of them went from there to, like, Africa. So there's, like, Al-Nustra, mm. and uh, there's one with a B. I mean, there, I mean, there's several different sects of them that all kind of branched out. Not to say that they wouldn't have happened in other places, but the actions that we took there definitely are apparent now. All right. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's all, it's it's weird too. Like, you know, you look back at the last, and I don't really. I, I've a podcast I listen to is a little bit political, and and the guy always says like all the last like five presidents could have been, um, you know, convicted of war crimes, like especially in Yemen, sure. and yeah. you know, it's just like we have been in perpetual warfare for fucking ever, and like. I think that's like one thing that I think about a lot is like that the military budget is so overinflated, but like also we are so fucked ec- economically. Like we have so much debt, and like you know places like China own it and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, will we ever get out of that perpetual warfare? Will we ever have a smaller military, or can we? Because yeah. if if we did, then like you know we're at a disadvantage. Yeah, we we've already economically we're fucked, and like uh, uh, China mm-hmm. could you know defense wise. Yeah, I mean. I've come, I've come to acknowledge that, yes, a extreme military budget may be necessary, but not if it's to protect our interests in other places. Like, we have all these military bases everywhere. Yeah. We, maybe we should have some where we're still in conflict before we get out, but in general, why can't we just scale that all back and we can protect the shit out of us and, you know, some of our close allies have a, a wide gate, but... All that money could be spent here at home and like if they wanted to win like the hearts and minds of people if they wanted people to to uh, support their actions and stuff even if blindly so you would think they would take care of their material material well-being first you know what I mean yep and I mean I don't know when it comes to like the the money part of it all like me being in recovery like it's it's something that I've really come to believe and that I think would change the fabric of our society is that if we if we placed emphasis on you know ending the ending the war on drugs, taking that money, putting it into like you know programs that treated people and stuff like that or you Definitely. know if that if that money came from the military budget or something like what what would our society look like, you know what I mean? Like as far as like the crime and the prison population and all that shit, but it's like with all these things, like, there is, like, very little incentive for anyone to actually change anything because, like, it, I don't know, It's it seems like – I've said it to my dad and I've said, I've said it to other people that support Trump and, and just anybody, really, because even the Democrats do the same shit, too. But it's like we don't – it doesn't seem like we have a government that represents us anymore. It's uh, – it represents – GM, corp- Boeing, Apple, yeah. you know, Lockheed Martin. Yep. And I, I remember – I think Bernie actually – I think Bernie in the 2016 was talking about getting rid of super PACs and like eliminating yeah. the ability to be funded by corporations. That right there, uh, eliminating the campaign finance laws that are in place now that allows for corporations to be people, you know yeah. what I mean? That would be a major step. I agree. You know, the thing, thing about Bernie is I'm done with him. I'm, yeah. I'm done with him. He, he, did, he did get screwed two times. By the DNC first, W. Washerman Schultz and all that shit with the DNC. Yeah. And then the second time they did it, but he ran a weak-ass campaign. Yeah. He refused to throw punches. He just... He bent the knee, bro. He, he fucking bent the knee. And <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, Twice. I'm done with him. 
I, done with him. And then he goes and campaigns for the person that screwed him yeah. twice. Not, not about it. He's 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 out of here. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's super disappointing because uh, I, you know the things that he talked about were he was the only one talking about some of them. You know, and now they've kind of started to talk about it a little bit. He, yeah, he did change the the political scene in that sense where he injected those ideas where other people are kind of starting to promote them. Right. Well, I know I know Biden's tax plan is like similar in a sense that it like wants to tax the ultra wealthy a little bit, right? But I, it's not much, right? A little bit. I mean, he's just placating. Right. You know, I I, I essentially what what I'm what I think if like Biden gets elected, he'll essentially be like a Obama 2.0. It'd be business as usual, standard like neo you know, neoliberal politics is normal where it's still totally understanding and accepting of capitalism unfettered but for a certain amount of people you know the upper echelon right i i feel like you know with liberals and like the woke movement type stuff like it gets annoying as fuck well that too but i feel like you know they the, the, a lot of people on the left will settle for social policies and they don't they won't actually settle for any economic change or any yeah, any foreign, you know campaign campaign yeah, finance law yeah, change or anything like that policy they're just like well i guess if we need to bomb yemen or you know if we need to fund these rebels here to inside a coup somewhere yeah they they just roll over the democrats are like what's the harlem globetrotters the guys yeah. that they play that are they're supposed to lose every game. Yeah. That's what the Democrats do, but they like, you know, have this air of being, you know, morally morally above it. And I'm right. like, but you're not. You're you're like Nancy Pelosi. She's passed all of these things like a uh, our bloated military budget. She helped get Trump more money than he even asked for. Right. And I mean, um, that among other things, she just she'll just vote on it. You know what I mean? Right. It's just playing towing the party line yeah doesn't isn't the law like if if we don't get to if an election doesn't like happen that she is the one that takes uh, becomes like a like i don't know i think i think that is in reference to like line of succession and death. right oh, okay that's so maybe like that's what if, i'm thinking of like should biden die yeah and then something happened to kamala harris then it would be probably Nancy Pelosi. But I actually don't know what's going to happen if both refuse to concede. Yeah. And they just... I, I don't know what happens in that situation either. Do you think a civil war is possible? Mm, like, yes and no. Like, I don't think it'd, it'd be a big, a big, huge, you know, bloodbath. Of, right. You know, but there'll probably be some violence. Where would... What, if you were going to predict it, where do you think... What what cities do you think would that would happen in? Oh, all the places we've seen riots and where they're like, you know, Portland, Portland. and Seattle would be like in L.A. and San Francisco, maybe New York, uh, Chicago. Yeah. M- maybe like in Miami. I don't see very many in the South doing it. Maybe no. like Atlanta, Georgia, or right. Houston, Texas, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see like this area really. I don't see it happening We're, here. It's mostly red here. Everybody here agrees, you know. Yeah. Which I mean, I. I don't agree with the politics or the policies, but I also don't agree with like the civil, like us having Violence a civil war. Yeah, yeah. There's like times where I'm like, just so so cynical and like, I'm sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But then my my rational self, I'm like, right. okay, well, there's steps to this. We gotta fucking we gotta work this out. Let's yeah do something else. I, I've always had this thought. Like I I don't think. The only way we could really ever actually change anything is that if all of us on the bottom, all of the laborers, all of the people who are on the bottom of the fucking totem pole, if we just stopped, if we just stopped. General strike? Yeah, general strike. Just stop what we're doing. We stop fucking working. We stop paying taxes and we just stop. Yeah. And that that would really be the only way to actually change anything. And they would still try to enforce it, you know, the way that these, you could essentially call them like, capitalist overlords, you know what I mean? They use the police departments as a, yeah. a means to protect their assets and yep. stuff. They're not there to keep the peace. They're there to protect property. Yep. And so if there was a general strike, that could probably do some damage. Yeah. And uh, like strong labor unions, if we were to get strong labor unions again where big collectives of workers could negotiate for pay, negotiate fair yeah. trade and everything, you know what I mean? Negotiate standard hours. 
like I always always hear people, especially in this area, uh, usually people that own businesses or properties or stuff, they're usually like, oh, no, unions are bad for the worker. Unions are bad. And I'm like, unions got us the, you know, eight-hour work day and weekends off and children can't be in the fucking coal mines, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're fundamentally good for workers. Right. And there's a lot of places that if you, like, start tra- talking about unionizing at work, they'll shit can you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've I've wondered that too. Like, why isn't there just a general laborers union? Like, and I know there probably is in some places. Like, there's some in America, but they're severely weakened. Right. You know what I mean? I think I I may be lying on this, but I think it might have been Reagan that kind of busted up some of the major unions because right. he you know he was super conservative in the eighties. Oh yeah. Well, I know, like, what, like as far as the mental health field goes, like, Reagan fucking demolished he a lot of that up. shit. Like, he literally had them open let asylums them and just let them out in the street. Yeah, good luck. Like, I, I literally, straps. I was literally at the grocery store today, and I saw, and I seen this guy, he hangs out around, like, you know, 4th and 19th in that area over there, and uh, this dude is homeless, and <laughs> it's okay. This dude is homeless, and he just is always battling to himself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, he's just walking around, like, and... Um, I've like I've seen him at the gas station by my girlfriend's house, and I've asked the clerk. I'm like, hey, what's up with him? Like, is he okay? He's like, dude, he he has money. He's just like he just he's just he likes like, to live that way. Well, that maybe, but he also is just kind of out there, like, and he just he's just constantly babbling to to himself, and like it's like it's so shitty that there is, and there are some resources for that kind of stuff, and there are some people that choose to just like be that way, and there are people who choose to be homeless too. But like, I don't know. It just seems like a we don't really give a fuck about that kind of stuff in this country. If they can't produce... Do me a favor, pull that mic, like, right to... You see where mine is? Yeah. Like, Sorry, below Dad. your chin? Sorry, Dad. You're good, dude. Perfecto. But... Yeah, no, we... We don't give a fuck about those people as a society, you know? Yeah, and we don't give a fuck about rehabilitating people from prison or, you know, it's like... N- nonviolent drug crimes are just like, yeah, dude. Yeah. 40 years. Yeah. You got this. Right. It's like, I'm 40 years old. Right. It's, I don't know, it's awful. But, I mean, we started off talking about what all Trump has done, but, I mean... Um... So, real quick, yeah. this might be a, a good topic to talk about, is if you will, pull up some of the early warning signs of fascism. Okay. It's it's questionable. I'm, I'm not going to push it any further. I just want you to maybe read them and tell me what you think. I forget when and where this was written, but I'm pretty sure it was after the Holocaust. After the Second World World War ended, some of these warning signs of fascism started popping up so that societies in the future could remember what what the bells sound like. Okay, so here's the list. Powerful and continuing nationalism. Disdain for human rights. Identification of enemies as a unifying cause. Supremacy of the military, rampant sexism, controlled mass media. That one, fuck. All of these, but that one especially, holy fuck. Um, Obsession with national security, religion and government intertwined, corporate power protected, labor power suppressed, disdain for intellectuals and the arts, obsession with crime and punishment, rampant cronyism and corruption and fraudulent elections. I'll let you make your own assumption but is that not like super worrying like that's work that's terrifying yeah i mean there is very little on that list that isn't happening in this country right now yeah the other day uh kenzie and i went to the holocaust museum in dallas yeah and it was rough you know it, it was hard to get through it but it was completely necessary and um it only solidified my consciousness you know my conscious thinking of of being weary of that and thinking about that and how fucking sad it is that that's actually rising you know yeah. that stuff is not do you think that that is the fault of capitalism or religion capitalism because religion exists in other places where fascism hasn't grown right and I would argue that you know a lot, a lot of what people take from religion, albeit the books are mostly terrible, but like a lot of people live their life in a peaceful way right. and they live it in, you know, Christ-like and they are right. uh, empathetic and care for people. Right. So the, those places 
I would argue, usually kind of put a damper on capitalism or are still developing. Or I, I don't know. I don't see anywhere where that's genuine of, of the populace. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, like, the first thing I think of with the, the culture that's kind of going along with, like, and I'm not trying to bash conservatives or Trump supporters. Like I, I think there are some. I had know some really great people that like believe in Trump. They think he's for the people. Some some of my family. Yeah, same. Yeah. And um, but what the first thing that comes to my mind is like <laughs> the charlatan type, like you know, mega church preachers who are like preaching wealth and like you know, obviously benefit very well from capitalism and religion in a sense and and the belief that those things can be intertwined and that they are you know don't get me wrong like i think i I believe in like a meritocracy like i think that as hard as you work and as much as you want to do with your life like that's that should be up to you you know but should be should be it's not necessarily reality no but go ahead no 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 no. but um that seems to me that's like part of maybe why the culture And part of the reason maybe why we're here is like things like that, you know, a mixing of capitalism and religion and that that the culture is accepting of somebody like Trump who is a blatant like I mean, he he checks off all all of the seven deadly sins. You know what I mean? He he just oozes um, non Christ like. You know what I mean, I, I, that is something that I'll, I'll never understand is how he got the inve- evangelical vote. I don't either. It blows my fucking mind. Like, especially like during the, the riots and hit the, the, the photo op with him holding the Bible upside down. Like they, they pepper sprayed protesters to get them to disperse. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking crazy to me. Like it, it almost seems like, you know, like I still, I still like pray to God. I still like, I'm not really a Christian, but I still like really admire the principles that Christ laid out and like yeah. the 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 ideals and, and things that and those come are from that. those are admirable right I won't negate that and it seems like that is so fucking far removed from what's happening now and I'm not saying for everybody but just like the like I don't think if Christ was an American voter would vote for Trump like I I just There's don't no way they would likely turn him down at the border or deport him if he got here right you know? fucking end up in a ice camp you know but. yeah I mean he's a brown Muslim, or well, he was Jewish, right? Yeah, yeah. So he was Jewish and a carpenter, just a working man. Yeah. I mean, they despise people like that. Yeah. I mean, he probably would have been, the chances of him being black or brown are way higher than him being anything else, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't like, make any sense. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, but I don't know. It's It's a mess, man. I mean, what do you where do you see all of this going and like what what are your hopes for the next few years and like like is there do you think there's any fixing this or do you think like i don't know i don't know man part of me wants to have hope you know what i mean that maybe like ideally it would be nice to at least just catch up with the rest of the western world right. and like have nationalized healthcare and you know not put people hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to go to school. You know, maybe we uh, stop destroying the environment. Some of these things that some of the rest of the world is not doing perfect, but they're trying, you know what I mean? Like the Paris Climate Accord, Mm -hmm. we pulled out of that. And yes, the the Paris Climate Accord is way short of doing anything. And it doesn't really do much. It's more symbolic. Why would you pull out of it? You know what I mean? The... I would like to catch up with the rest of the world and be comparable to like Germany or Norway or Sweden where the people are happy and they do well. And those aren't communist, socialist countries. They're, you know, they've got a hybrid system where they still use capitalism. Right. And the people are very happy there yeah. in, in general. Right. Worst case, I, it, it could be like, I don't know, um, it could be like Rome, you know what I mean? Like it's just a slow crawl to the grave and like this yeah. could be like a failed state. Yeah. There's I think I saw something about Cornell West talking the other day and he, he made some genuine points. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but he considered America or considers America a failed state. Yeah. It's uh I don't know, it's it's interesting. Oh, yeah. What do you think? I mean 
I remember. Let, let me let me preface it with this. I remember I had this re- really weird interaction with this guy when I was probably seventeen. I was working with my dad. We were doing a construction job on the high school in our hometown, and I met this guy who was doing the audio and video system for the new uh, theater that we were doing there. And uh, me and this dude were sitting outside smoking a cigarette. I think uh, I don't. I can't remember if we smoked weed together. If he just was like a chill dude that I met, and like was it Smiley? Yeah. <laughs> our old friend but um no it was just a random dude man and i remember, and i don't remember what was going on politically then but i remember that you know i was starting to like kind of get a mind for that kind of stuff and be curious and like care about what's going on in the world and like i don't know how the conversation got to this but i i i asked him like do you think that we'll always have to have money and he said something to me he's like i think that money is just a symbol and a way for us to exchange goods and services and as long as those goods and services still exist we'll be able to have a society you know and um i think like with that i think that whatever happens economically and politically i think that as long as there's people good people here which i do think that the majority of people in this country are good people and they're it's not really fair because their reality is being distorted by social media, the news, the fucking actors, the political actors mm-hmm. and all, all these things and, and the provocateurs and the, the people who want to seize control and greed and all these things. Like, I do feel like the majority of people are good. And as long as those people are alive and well and aren't, you know, their safety isn't being threatened by something every day in front of their face, I think that we have potential for a great society still. Mm -hmm. And, you know... So you think money is going to always be necessary? No, no. I think goods and services are always going to be necessary. Of course. And I, I think... I think we'll look back on this maybe a hundred years from now or a thousand. Probably a hundred or so. (laughs) And we'll look back on this time of like, you know, unchecked capitalism to where, you know, billionaires are able to amass fucking wealth that they'll never be able to use. And then there's people who have fucking nothing. You know, and, you, and, and a lot of times it's no fault of their own. You know, people are like, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Come on, just yeah. go to work. And it's, some of these people have three, four jobs. They just yeah. got the shit into the stick and they can't can't get up. Dude, if, if enough, just a few bad things could happen to you to totally fall out. Like you, you know, say you have no family. You struggle with something like addiction. You get in a car accident. Uh, yeah. Or in your car. Disabilities. You get, it, yeah, you're, you're physically you're hurt. Yeah, I mean, it, it just enough bad things in the in the right amount of time could really fucking just totally in, end your life, and you be homeless and just yeah. barely surviving. And when you have nothing and struggle every day for basic things, what do you do? There is no getting out of it. You have to resort to crime. Yeah. You have to steal things. You have to trade things. You have to act in a manner that is you know survival instinct. Yep. I feel like a. a a lot of, if not all, crime could be fixed or, you know, mitigated much better if people's basic needs were met. I'm Agreed. not saying everybody needs a three-bedroom house and a Lambo, right. but, like, a food, solid shelter. roof, solid yeah. food, you know what I mean? Work if they can work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you should work if you can. Agreed. You should. Agreed. But not everybody can, yeah. and that's where people like us pick up the slack. Yeah. You know, and I don't mind that. I don't mind having money taken from my check if I had a way to know where it was going or what proportions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, I would gladly pay a dollar more or 50 cent more per item or whatever at Walmart so that people could like have, you know, That's fringe benefits. That's the bare minimum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, I don't remember what I was looking at or reading the other day about fringe benefits. And I, was, I thought, I was like, how funny is that, that, that it's called fringe benefits because it's, it's fringe. It's on the edge of things. It's not normal mm-hmm. when it's like the basic like health care, uh, you know, like uh, maternity leave. Like, it's like it's shit that is like so necessary yeah. and changes your life like <laughs> and could be is really good for you. But yeah. it's fringe and it's like out of the ordinary. I was like, that's so fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Like and if something like that, you know, is given to people, if it's good for them on a mass level, it's good for the society. It's good for the population in general, you know what I mean? Yeah. Happier people will make happier, you know, or better choices. Uh, happier sounds fucking goofy, but, no, I know what you know, hap- people that are doing well will make better decisions. And, and, we'll, and it'll make our whole society we'll make more, better. People will be more productive, you know? Yep. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think that our lives should be based around productivity, but it is. You right. know what I mean? If everybody could pursue their 
personal, you know, their personal goals and do things they genuinely enjoy that make their life whole, that would be sweet, but it's not realistic. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. Like, I, I had this weird thought when the pandemic started and they, you know, sent out the fucking checks. I was like, you know, th- this could be like, a, I remember I, I was looking up stuff about, you know, the Black Plague and the Renaissance happened right after the Black Plague. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I got excited thinking about like this and it's a utopian type you know, ideal, but like to where if we had a society to where like our basic needs were met, like what, like we'd have all the time in the world to create art and create music and, and do all these things and do things we're passionate about yeah. and we'd be happy and like, and, and not everybody's a artist or, or an artist or a musician. You know, there'd be people that genuinely enjoy building things and designing things. That's still a creativity and, and passion yeah. and like, yeah, it's things that people actually love. Yeah. You know, and, I, I don't know. I just this conversation probably get, is gonna get us put on a watch list as like <laughs> communists. You know what I mean? Because they're like, oh, you mean uh, everybody has their basic needs met and everybody like has a better chance at being happy? Hmm. Right. And I'm sketchy. I, I get the I get the perspective of like if I don't think like communism in itself has ever worked. And I don't like the the problem with it is trusting a government to dole things out. Yeah. You it's, know, yeah, it, that's that's the that's dangerous and it's fucking killed millions and millions of people, you know. And but like capitalism's killed millions and millions of people too. Yeah, there's no system yet that has you know been able to prevent that or I guess isn't willing to. Right. You know what I mean? Einstein had this quote that he he said like I don't know if it was an interview or just like I've heard it quoted before, but he said like the religion of the future will praise science and art. It's something like that. I'm probably fucking it up, but mm-hmm. it's something like that. And it's, you know, like... It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. Like, and I, I'm a deeply spiritual person, and I think that, like, religion has its place. Like we said before, it... Uh, it a lot of people do good with religion and yeah, live a good life because of it. more often than not, it does make people better. Right. And, like, I'm completely secular, but I'll be pragmatic in saying that, you know, what's good for some people is not good for others so I mean there's most of the people in my family are Christians and they're genuinely good people right so it's wrong to blanket an entire religion right but it, it is that, that that idea is exciting to me like to think about like a religion that is both spiritual but play, based in science and like that like has places high value on like art and creativity and passion and I don't, and I'm probably like blowing up what he was talking about. I really don't know the context, but I don't know. It's like uh, I hope we get there. And like I feel like, in, uh, like places like Norway and Germany and like some of these places where they've already started to change their society to where, um, you know, like there's more social welfare. There's still forms of capitalism, and there's still like a meritocracy to where you can work and build and and do as much as you want, but also like the basic needs of most people is met. Like, I, why can't we have some kind of hybrid system? And I don't know if America is ready now or will ever be ready to be totally radically changed. Like, I don't, and I don't know if it should be. Like, I, I think the Constitution is great. Bill of Rights is great. And, like, but I think there's ways that we could still implement those things and expand upon them and, like, make life better for people. Yeah. And, but I don't know if it will happen in our lifetimes. That's... I mean, that's just fundamentally what everybody wants. It's just a matter of getting there yeah. and, like, defining that outcome. Because, yeah. you know, even the even the people that we completely disagree with, and some of them I just I despise some of these people, they genuinely think that what they're doing is best. And right. they think that they think the same thing that I do. Right. Yeah. Just, I'm right. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, like, the whole... I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I mean, on some things. Yeah. But, I mean, that's, like, the whole enigma of being a person is, like... I don't know if you've ever heard the This Is Water speech by David Foster Wallace. And mm. in it, he talks about how, like, as humans, we live our lives through our own eyes, our own perspective, our own body, our own home, our own things. And we... It's, it's very difficult at times to get outside of yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, uh, I'm reading this book right now. It's called... Uh, 
leadership and self-deception getting out of the box. And then it's, it talks about how when we, we get inside this box in our consciousness to where we view p- other people as objects and then we so we justify our own thoughts and feelings and actions and we blame other people. And uh, like that's like the whole – that's like the whole issue about being human is that we get stuck inside ourselves. We can't see other people for as they are just people. Yeah. And we think we're right. We justify our actions. We get polarized through things like social media and we get tribalistic with us versus them, yeah. you know, and it's a function probably somewhat of our ego, like a survival mechanism of being fucking cavemen back in the day. Yeah, you know, maybe it's like a physiological, like evolutionary adaptation, right? Self-defense, uh-huh. Something like that. Yeah. And I mean, if we could get out of that, if we could get to a place and it's not, it's not like it's ever happened and it's fucking utopian, I know, but like if we could get to a place where we have more love and acceptance and tolerance of others and like, you know, like, and I, I agree with you like about religion, like that's why I, you know, and I've, I've gotten into arguments with family members. I've, you know, because I don't, I don't believe in any religion that that prioritizes theirs over others. That says that other people who believe differently are wrong. Like I, I believe in God in a sense of the universe and source consciousness. But I think that if if I were God and I wanted to get to people's hearts, I would like, I would go to every corner of the earth and I would inspire people to write about me and write about. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't really believe in God in a sense that he's like another person. Right. It's bigger than that. It's a fabric of the universe. But like it. I don't. I just think that God, I, this is a, how I'll say it. God is greater than religion. God equals love and is greater than religion. Like it's just sounds I, simplistic, but yeah, I I can dig that. All, I I don't know. There's a lot of I don't know. I have I have my issues with religion as a whole, and also I don't think there's anything wrong with believing and feeling that you know greater consciousness. I'm just not totally convinced. I get it. I, I, I mean, there's been experiences that we've talked about, you know, where I definitely feel some other type of connection with humans mm-hmm. and Playing with, music, with the man. nature, you know. Um, that I, I really think like music is an art in general, but especially playing music together, like it, it, it transcends different boundaries. Yeah. Different things that you can't feel when you're like sober or standing or talking with somebody. Yeah. Well, and you and I have played together so long. Like we, we don't communicate verbally when yeah, we play music and we can jam. Other. We can just freestyle jam you yeah. and Harvey and we can just kind of flow with it. And it's, uh, that's where I think that like the spiritual aspect comes into play where our consciousness is like, we're, we're bigger than just this one person yeah. and this one instrument. We are this one thing for five minutes that or whatever. I have like personal testimony to, you know, to support that. I mean, and I doubt that in my lifetime it'll ever get to the point where science has a better grasp and understanding and explanation. Right. I think there is an explanation, but we right. just don't understand it yet. We're not there in science, you know? Yeah. I think, I hope that, I hope that in our lifetime science does get to the point like where we can prove, you know, Einstein's theory of every, of relativity and prove that like everything is energy and prove that yeah. consciousness is all one. Like, I don't know <laughs> what that technology would look like, but what, I, what do you think would happen to organized religion? I don't know. I mean, what's crazy is like organized religion, especially like things like the Catholic church and like Mormonism and stuff like they, 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 they have an incentive to follow the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like the Pope just recently announced that, um, you know, same sex marriage is okay. And like, they have an incentive to, because we're always going to evolve socially. And if Mm -hmm. they, if they don't, you know, lose followers. Yeah, exactly. That's like a, uh, like a built in mechanism of the church in order to make sure that they can, of course, keep, keep their their flock. You yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, and f- fuck it. I mean, they're moving forward. Yeah. I saw something the other day where it was like a local news article talking about how the Pope said that, and somebody said he's not a real Catholic. And then somebody posted <laughs> underneath it and said he's literally the fucking Pope. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, there's going to be those people. Yeah. So like we're saying, like if science does get to the point where like eventually is maybe not understanding, but can explain more of these like metaphysical experiences and, you know, explanations, I think it would tear all of the churches apart. Like there would be like probably like half of every denomination of all religions would be like, okay, all right, we will concede 
that these are proven facts and we'll mold our spirituality around these facts. And then there will be like the uh, sectarians where they'll like, no, it's yeah. not true. Dinosaurs walked on the same earth as, as humans, same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a, a planet for me when I die. Yeah. My own planet. Right. There'll still be those people that are like, nope, I refuse. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I mean, and I think that's like when a lot of people who like do, you know, conspiracy stuff about aliens, they talk about, uh, you know, why would why don't, why don't we have disclosure yet? And one of the things that always gets brought up is the fact that like people who are extremely religious could like fucking kill themselves. Out, yeah. yeah. I mean, they could literally totally. lose their shit yeah. at one, you know, if aliens showed up and we realized like, oh shit, we're not alone in the universe and yeah. this, you know, changes everything. That would about, be fucking wild. There would, yeah. I didn't really think about them killing themselves, but like, you're probably right. It would like shatter the foundation of their personality, of their being. All the, you know, there's people like that, that all yeah. they are is uh, r- religious people. Like they're just the children of God and like if that narrative got shattered, yeah. Damn. Yeah. It wouldn't be good. And uh, I, I, since we're on the topic a little bit about aliens, I remember I shared a few months ago that article that uh, said that the, the Pentagon said that they have retrieved a, a craft from yeah. off world. And somebody commented on there and goes, they're trying to distract us. And I was like, from what? This is the fucking great, like, this is the biggest yeah. question you can't ever. can't distract me from this. I, I mean, dude, like, <laughs> what? Well, it's the. What well, else do you want? It could change everything about our society if we yeah. knew that like it, it could change the religion and i mean everything like it could change if we if we had the technology that these crafts use it could change our whole you know like how we power things if they're cool to us if they're cool i i think more likely they wouldn't just show up and obliterate us they would make us slaves and not like put us in chains but they would like set up our planet as like probably like a fuel stop and they come here receive natural resources that they can turn into fuel or whatever and they can have this planet deplete the resources for its yeah. greater civilization that some people believe that is happening now some people believe that reptilians yeah are a part the of the White government yeah. that our gold can be used as uh what's the word uh, reflective material for space for craft mm-hmm. and that uh, it's I mean dude it's, I've it's gone, way out there it's fucking out there I mean you know me like I've gone all the way to flat earth and then I was like okay I'm okay. gonna you maybe, know maybe step back a little yeah bit. but th- there are people that believe that like that that our technology was given to like the you know Anunnaki's or whatever well our technology like cell phones and computers and stuff mm-hmm. was given to us by the reptilians and he, uh, uh, they use our society to like you know, get the material goods like gold and things that they need for their craft or whatever. And then they like, and there's even people that believe that they harness like negative energy. So that's why all this, like, you know, uh, imbalance. Yeah. And I mean, who knows, you know? Yeah. If there was sufficient evidence to prove that, I wouldn't deny it. You know what I mean? I would just follow the logical chain of events and like, does this make sense? Is this provable? Can I repeat this? You know, run through the steps. And if they ended up being like, hey, we're your gods now. Get fucked. Yeah. Like, okay, well, yeah. let's get it going. Yeah. I mean, uh, there is, there's like people, there's like, you know, there's conspiracy theories about secret space programs that they say that we've been going to space for, since the 80s. Like that maybe. We, that, I can see that. You know, maybe. I mean, yeah. and it's like a function of, like the ultra wealthy it's like that have you ever seen that movie Elysium I haven't but I know what's going on in that where the wealthy people are able to essentially avoid all the climate disaster yeah. and all the back poor, and forth all the poor people are left on earth yeah um, all of the ultra wealthy are in space like either on a space station or on the moon or something this like that this is what would happen if Elon Musk got elected dude <laughs> Straight up. That's my biggest worry about like space stuff is like that the ultra wealthy will get there first. For sure. And then we'll just be left here with a fucking dying planet. If capitalism is indeed the dominating structure when we get off world, for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, just, I mean, that's like what, like 25 families or something? Yeah. <laughs> you 7 billion can kick rocks. Yeah. I mean,. Um, that's yeah. Whenever I heard he wants to colonize Mars, that was the first thing I thought of. Was like, well, dying. Yeah, that. and he said he said uh, it wouldn't ab- abide by Earth laws. Yeah, they set their own laws. 
I'm like, really, dude? Oh, yeah. And, like, uh, I saw a meme that it kind of it correlates. It was like, what's the most libertarian thing you've ever seen? And uh, somebody said, or you can imagine, somebody said, an eight-year-old coal miner buying heroin with Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man. Yeah. In that sense, it's just like trading the boot of big government for the boot of big business, you know, yeah. the big corporations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like some ideas of libertarian stuff, but it, it is a little, like, scary because, like, I, I never really – I. I only recently kind of dug in and tried to figure out what a lot of them believe. And, like, some of it's good, like personal freedom, personal yeah, property. I can get on board with that. Yeah. Guns. Yep. I can, guns. Get on, I can get on board with that. Very limited government, more yeah. local government than anything. But they also, like, believe in, like, dismantling unions and yeah. privatized health care, privatized, privatized roads. Everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, that you can own people if you, you know. Yeah, like, you can buy a slave if you can afford it. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, dude, Especially on businesses and governments, there needs to be regulations to protect consumers and workers. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you mean you're just going to like ask big business, oh, please, you know, please let us have an eight hour work day. Nah, dude, 12. Yeah. Or don't have a job. Yeah. And whenever your housing and food and like your income to, to meet your basic necessities is at jeopardy, you don't really have a choice to not work. No. So it's like a, it's like a, you know, shake your hand, but have a knife in it kind of thing where, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I've thought that all along kind of, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's kind of dicey to say and like, you know, the wrong person could take offense to it. But I mean, I, slavery really, never really ended. Like it just, it just, just turned changed in, form. Yeah. It just changed form to. Capitalism. Wage slavery. Yeah, you know, yeah. totally. These people are kept destitute and they have jobs. It's not like they're lazy and not working hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like I, I get along more with the libertarians despite some of these things right. than I do like the authoritarian left. left. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you look at the political compass and I know it's bullshit, it's, it's loosely based on, you know, it's biased questions and stuff. But it's commonly used for jokes. That's about all it should be used for. Right. But if you look at it in a simplistic means, like the top left corner is like, you know, authoritarian left, like uh, super authoritarian communist regimes. Yeah. And some some people will still simp and fucking stand for Stalin and, you know, some of these super dictators. They were just a dictator on the other side of the spectrum. I get along more with the people of the... Uh, lib right than the off left because yeah. at least these people don't I don't know they, they, I think it's more about the um, personal freedom and like the limited government you know what I mean yeah yeah I agree I don't like the idea of having a huge government like I, yeah and it seems so weird to me now that like <laughs> people on the left like trust the government now like it's like like when did when did that happen? Like when are we supposed to ever trust the government? Like you know what I mean? Like they haven't no, had no, our interest. Question. They haven't had our interest yeah. ever socially, economically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they just. I mean, maybe they did in the early days, but it doesn't seem like any time since we've been yeah. alive. Like I, I really admire the way that uh, I think it was who who did the uh, the, the original New Deal was it FDR? Yeah, it was yeah. FDR. All of the social programs and welfare safety nets and jobs programs enacted to help pull us out of the depression. Right. That's like ultimate um, progress. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I don't understand how we got away from that. Yeah. I don't. It's. I mean, uh, it all kind of comes, seems like it all circles back to capitalism. You know what I mean? And it's like when it's unchecked and, and it's been systematically done that way like over the since the 80s really i mean uh, they've removed all kinds of stuff right to yeah like, re regulations of all kinds yeah and, i mean and that's another thing that's kind of dangerous about trump too is he's like so against regulation and i, I can understand in some areas where there's probably too much regulation like small and, business regulations or something you know that's what people usually go to is they're like well if i wanted to start a business i'd get crushed under the weight of all the regulations yeah. and i don't know that to be true but that's one scenario Compared to like all of these huge conglomerate corporations getting the benefit of these. Right. 
But I mean, uh, some of it's great, like EPA. Like we should have that. But I mean, Trump's pretty much dismantled it, right? I no, mean, it's still there. But you put somebody that sued the EPA there. Somebody that's running it has formerly sued it. Right. Or he was the last time I was looking yeah, at it. You know, because yeah. this dude's had like a crazy turnover of employees. Yeah. Jesus. I don't know, man. I mean, uh, I think we'll be fine here in West Texas. I think For that sure. you know. There's a lot of, there's mostly conservative people, and there are a lot of us younger people who are li- liberal, but I don't see, like, us, you know, starting an uprising and starting a civil war not, here. Not here. Yeah. There may be some conflicts in other cities that yeah. are purple or whatever, you know, like, mm-hmm. kind of, where they're kind of split, you know, yeah. like, places, like you said before, like, where they've had a lot of riots in the last few years, where there is a population of liberal and conservative. And, yeah. Which and, is... And the thing is, is the liberals aren't the ones rioting. It's right. it's people that are either a political and don't have time to to worry about politics because their material well being is in jeopardy every day. You know right. what I mean? They don't have they don't have the time or the capacity to soak these things in. Right. The liberals are the people that would post on Twitter the day after uh, RBG died and were like, if they try to appoint somebody, let's burn it down. And then after they do it, they're like, Cheerio. Let's go to brunch. You right. know, the liberals are the ones that will just play along. They'll roll over and bend the knee. The people that are genuinely, like, ideologically riding are, like, anarchists and anarcho-communists right. and, you know, people on the entirely actual far left. Because, right. like, even in American politics, Bernie Sanders is, like, center left. He's yeah. not even that radical. Right. But the Overton window has been slowly moved over and over and over. And I fear that's what's going to happen again this year yeah. if... Biden gets in, he'll have all these half measures that he'll propose to the Republicans, and the Republicans will be like, no, we're not doing that. So he'll back off of that and then take a Republican position. Right. And then everybody moves to the right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's it's sketchy. I mean, like, that class I was in today, he said he said the same thing, that a lot of the people rioting are anarchists and stuff. And, like, uh, I don't know if that's wrong or right. I mean... I think it's really shitty when like small businesses get destroyed. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, unfortunate. You know, fuck your target. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I I can't consider myself a liberal. I consider myself left. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not that far where I'm not, you know, I'm not advocating for some of this stuff. But I will say I do understand. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand the outrage too. Mm-hmm. You know, like this is decades of being not listened to and nothing changing yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. And I mean. You know, coupled with the fact that we're in a pandemic, people are hurting financially, people are scared, people and, have been bored. Yeah, and people that have their health care tied to their jobs have lost their jobs and health care. Like 40 something million Americans just in the first couple of months and stopped reading about it, about the unemployment yeah. applications. I mean, I'm super lucky to have a job, you know? Yeah, super lucky. Same. And um, I don't know, I mean, I, I worry about, like I wonder, like I worry that of who who's gonna who who all will die who who if there is conflict and like what does that mean for us as a as a nation and like you know it's fucking tragic and there's been like it just seems like every couple weeks or months or so there's another tragedy another shooting or another you know the pandemic's like coming back around and uh, it is it is fucking freaky you know like I it. Like, I'm pretty, like, empathic, and I, like, when shit is, like, I, I can't, that's why I can't stay plugged in, because if I do, like, I will start to feel like life is terrible, yeah. and, like, I, you know, as a person in recovery, I have to be careful about what information I get. Like, I'm right. a fucking, I'm, I'm similar to you, I'm an information junkie, but, like, I just stay listening to the, the funny. Goofy, goofy podcasts, yeah. and, like, you know, like. That's good for you. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know if that's right, morally. Like, I don't know if I should be more plugged in, you know what I mean? It'd well, be, like, if your mental health is in jeopardy over it, I don't think you have a moral obligation to subject yourself to that, you know? Right. I, I can take it, you yeah. know? Yeah. I'm like a uh, what is it? Is somebody a sadomasochist? What is it? When people <laughs> yeah, like, you like, you like yeah, I'm like, yeah, glutton fucking, for punishment. <laughs> yeah, glutton for punishment. I'm like watching this shit, and I'm like, man, this is terrible. You just scroll yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> atonement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I think 
like I said before, I think most people are good. I think we'll probably be okay. Yeah, for sure. Regardless of what happens. Like, I do worry. Like, I do worry for women. I worry for women's rights if Trump gets reelected. And, and, you know, I don't even know if we're going to know tomorrow. You know what I mean? Definitely not. It'll be Friday or Saturday, I bet. It'll take several days. Or maybe longer. Or maybe longer. He, yeah. and, and Trump has already said that. He's like, well, if it's not done the day of, then, you know, he's contesting it or, like, whatever, you know. And. It's definitely going to take longer than that. There's 330 million. Well, that not that many people are going to vote. Yeah. But millions and millions of votes to be counted. It's not right. going to be done in one day. Yeah. But, but like, you're right. We are going to be okay. And, like, fundamentally, I doubt anything really changes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if Biden gets in there, we're still going to be fucking bombing, you know, yeah. Middle Eastern countries, turning little kids into skeletons. Yeah. Still going to be charging up, you know hundreds of hundreds of dollars for a vial of insulin and we're still we're still going to have a lot of these systemic problems joe is just going to be like you know no mean tweets and a professional <laughs> persona and that's right. one thing i like about trump is i like the shit talking it's entertaining it is entertaining it's i mean and he, he's kind of like a comedian. it's kind of funny like yeah I, that's one thing i i probably will miss one of the few things is just like you never know what this motherfucker is going to say do you think that people like eventually will like? I mean, I don't know. He's pretty old. I don't know how much longer he'll be around. But like, you know how like people are with George W. Bush now. Like rehabilitated a, him. Yeah, yeah. Do you think people um, will ever do that with Trump? Yes, and it, it will be people like Ellen DeGeneres that will have him on their show and they'll talk about their newfound hobby of painting. Yeah. That's what they did with Bush. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. We cannot rehabilitate Bush. Fuck George Bush. Yeah. He got us into an illegal and offensive war. Yep. Killed like two hundred thousand. Iraqi people, innocent civilians, and that's like a, a conservative number. Oh, yeah, yeah. So did Obama. Uh, so did Obama. He raised up the drone war. Oh, yeah. He killed, you know, would bomb weddings in Yemen. Killed and American citizens. Killed, yeah, Anwar al -Awlaki. Yeah. Yeah, sixteen-year-old kid. No, yeah. no do, no do justice. You know, or a, what's the word? Due process. Due process. Yeah. Just, yeah. He, that Obama's next, though, you know, they're going to start having... Well, they've him. already done it. I mean, yeah. he signed that deal with Netflix, you know. Oh, like, that's right. But, but, but most people don't even really know, like, the some of the atrocities that Obama did. And like I said before, like, as a person and as a representative of our country, I think he did a good job. It's like, he's a great yeah. speaker. You know, I, I was grateful to have a, the first black president, but, like... I mean, I think it's true of all presidents. They're just a fucking placeholder, and they're just a fall guy, yeah. and they, you know what I mean? They really don't have that much power, and, like, you know... I mean, and there was actual tangible good things that Obama did do, like, like gay, marriage. gay marriage and stuff. The Iran uh, nuclear deal, Yeah, that was a great deal. We had been trying to make a deal with them for years, trying to give them back their money. It's not like we sent them our money. We froze their assets and essentially put embargoes and tariffs all over their shit, and we made it so that if you stop production of nuclear weapons and have a international, you know, body of inspectors come in regularly and prove that you're not, we'll let you have your money back and we can start lifting these sanctions and getting your country back together, you know what I mean? And right. then we pulled out of it. Yeah. And then and then we drone struck that general Soleimani. Yeah, yeah Soleimani. That brought us really close. Yeah. I mean and it's it seems like forever ago now, and it seems like not a big deal. But it was, that was not even a year ago, though, wasn't it? Was it was like March or something. I mean, it's like earlier this year. Yeah. We that that could have been really bad. Yeah. Because they retaliated. They shot rockets into like a U.S. air base. Nobody was killed, but right. still, you know. Yeah. It got us real close. Yeah, man. Um, I feel like, you know, Iran, Russia, and China. That's like the like the three that are like, e man. I mean. If something were to pop off, you know, World War Three, it would be them three probably. You know what I mean? It seems that yeah, way. Yeah, most likely it would be like, I'm willing to bet Russia and China would, you know, align themselves in order to, yeah, you know, take out this the main superpower. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, and it's it's weird too. Like, <laughs> the more time goes on, like there's all these things that we're still like, you know, like how long has Snowden been in hiding? You know what I mean? Like, and there's all these things that like. It just seems like something else is always happening, and uh, like no, it does. It just if it like Epstein. Epstein's just like out of um, out of the fucking the conversation. Yeah, like, you know, and it's, the news cycle moves so fast, you can't like critically analyze any one story or situation. And then nothing is actually ever done about it. You know, uh, it's 
I don't know. But that that may actually be like a tactic, not for like the global cabal of child pedophile, you know, cannibals, but like, <laughs> but like especially for the Trump administration. Like, hey, I know we fucked up yesterday, but he just posted some shit on Twitter, and it's going to be the new cycle today. Yeah. So tomorrow, just post something else, you know, just. Right. Kind of coffee. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, that, that's a silly one. Yeah, like, yeah. I will say, Trump got picked on for like a lot of shit that doesn't even matter. Like, right. I, like me personally, I the like personal attacks and like his character. Yes, it does matter, but I really don't give a fuck if he's rude or abrupt. Yeah. I care about the policy. You know right. what I mean? The policies put he, that he's put in are shitty and detrimental to a lot of people. But I I don't care if he sends mean tweets. You know. Yeah. People yeah. picked on him for little stuff. Right. Yeah, and it seems it's weird too. Like it's almost like Trump being president over here set a precedence for a lot of other countries, like Bolsonaro in Brazil. Yeah, and, and Duterte then, in yeah, the Philippines. Yes, dude. Far right nationalism is gaining popularity. Yeah. Man. These these people are extreme right wing, you know, quasi authoritarian. Yeah. You know, and and even he's even like emboldened a lot of U.S. representatives and congressmen and mayors and all the way down to the local areas. Right. Like, I can I can act like Trump when Trump is gone, and I can get votes because the Trump ism, you know, the Trump ism, the Trump era, that's not going to be gone next week, you know, or yeah. when he's gone, you know, these people would follow him to the ends of the earth. They'll they'll still vote in that manner. All right. Yeah, and it's weird too, like. It's weird that right-wing nationalism is on the rise in a lot of places. And like when I was younger and really started to dig into conspiracy theories, one world government, new world order was always the thing that right. was touted mm. and talked about and we were wary of. And it seems like we are – like as a, in, the, on the, in the world, we are so much further away from that ever being a reality. Totally. And, and I don't know if it would be good or bad. I mean like – you know, I, I've always, I always, when I was really young, like thought like, why can't the world just be all together and love each other? We're all humans. And like, you know, the utopia, you know what I mean? But, uh, I don't know. It's just weird how like conspiracies are on the, are on the rise, but it seems politically like we are so much further from ever having any kind of a one world Unity government like that. Yeah. Unless that is a function of the, I mean, I'm just going deep conspiracy theory right. here, but like. That is how a one world government functions is like through fascism, through fascism. And it's just like, I don't know. It got really fucking close the last time it got big. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was pretty impressive the way that fascism spread and how efficiently it took over territory right. and, you know, exterminated people, people in really impressive ways. Yeah. The I mean, USSR and I mean, all that. And that's arguably not fascism really? but yeah but extreme authoritarianism yeah the ideology behind it doesn't support fascism yeah but i guess that's true. It, but some it's of the means communism. yeah but some of the means that they use to do these things are are kind of kind of like that you know what i mean they could be right. comparable right so i mean we're well over an hour and a half now and we can kind of wrap it up with this but i i, I ask in any interview i like to ask this when we're talking about issues but like Magic wand, you can you can do whatever unlimited funding, uh, whatever policies you could put in place, uh, utopia or not. What would you do? Quick list would be like um, probably do a UBI. I would do uh, something way bigger and more ambitious than the Green New Deal. It's the right direction. Some of the things inside of it are unrealistic as far as their timing. I would just do a. A big ass package on that. I would legalize all drugs. Uh, I'd pull us out of all these foreign countries, bring our bring the troops home, and uh, I don't know. Start trying to repair our uh, international allies relationships. You know what I mean? Right. Try try for a better world yeah. through cooperation. Yeah, I like it. Well, thanks so much for doing this, bro. All right. Well, uh, if the world doesn't end tomorrow, we'll see you next time. Thanks, y'all. Thank you.